As you start your new game, you will choose the standard sphere grid. Overall, there is nothing hidden in the first area. Just play through the game until you get sucked up by the whale's butthole. After that, there is still not much for you to do until you meet Riku. She will show you the sphere grid, and your first priority is to get cheer. It is optional to start farming for grenades here. If you're farming, have Titus use cheer as Riku steals. You have plenty of potions, so use them if needed. The grenades will be good for extra gill early on, but save one or two. You'll be using them later. You will find yourself in Besaid soon enough. Go straight for the Mooncrest on the right. At the Cloister of Trials, make sure to grab the Destruction Sphere's hidden chest. Do this at each temple's trial. There are plenty of guides on this already, thus I will not be reviewing how to get these. Once you wake up the next morning and join the party, head back into the Besaid village and talk to the village trader. She will mention that something is stuck in her dog's mouth. Interact with her dog and you will find Valifor's second overdrive, Energy Blast. Before you start going through the tutorial battles for your new team, there are a few things you will need to know about how you will be leveling up your new characters. First off, there is Lulu. You will not be using any levels with Lulu for quite a while. Then there is Kamari. He will be moving directly towards Riku's Fear Grid. The other characters will be moving forward until they reach their level 2 locks that break them into their neighbor's sphere grid. Yuna is the exception. She will actually be sitting one sphere away. The tutorial battle against the large flyer Garuda can drop Dark Touch. You have two battles against him coming up, so it is a good opportunity to try and farm for this. If you don't get it, quit the game and go back to the autosave. If you get the weapon for Waka, it combos well with his Dark Attack. Now it is time to leave Besaid and get on the boat to Kilika. Give Awaka 1001 gil for seed money. Keep kicking this suitcase until you have 20 potions. Slight note here, you should be using Titus' overdrive as much as possible in order to unlock his other overdrives. You will level up faster if you include all characters in battle, so make sure everyone gets a turn for boss battles. It is important to include Yuna in these early battles. Her Aeon's stats will scale with her. I tend to have her use Null Magic just before a magic enemy would attack. You should get used to this now. 
because later on when you start stealing in battle, it will be very useful. There is a PC mod for all characters to gain experience from battle. It can become a real chore to always include everyone, so there is no shame in what is really just a quality of life improvement. The next area of importance is the Kilika Woods. Grab the Luxphere to the north and battle Lord Ochu. Make sure to get an overkill. You can prepare Valifor's Overdrive before battle. It is a good finisher for any boss. In general, you should get an overkill if possible. I will tell you to get the overkill if it is a requirement. The Sin Spawn battle up the stairs is another opportunity to get a Dark Touch weapon. Again, this is optional but you may farm for it if you wish. Keep moving the story along, and be sure to get the jack shot. Now in Luka, after progressing the story a bit, you will want to talk to Awaka and buy Titus's slow touch weapon. You can get poison touch for Waka. It won't be useful for long. He gets a much better weapon quite soon. Poison Touch is optional, so make sure it doesn't leave you strapped for cash. Make sure to beat the Luka Goers. After you meet Orin on the docks, Open the two chests in the back for two purple spheres, one for HP and one for magic. You should have these purple spheres now. In between these two cutscenes, it is a good opportunity to grab this chest. This concludes part one. In part two, we should review some Blitzball and get past the Thunderplanes.